So uh, when we talked about linear systems earlier, we talked about the three things that we can do to a system of linear equations or a matrix, uh, which is of course just a representation of that linear system. We can switch two rows, we can multiply one row by a constant, and we can add multiples of one row to another row. All of these three create an equivalent system, which just is our way of manipulating the linear system to make it easier for us to handle. Let's begin today's lesson by defining what we mean by a reduced row echelon form, which is going to be the final form that we want to put a augmented matrix into. So again, an augmented matrix is just the system of linear equations, the coefficients of the linear system, plus that extra column, which is the solutions to those, that linear system. We're going to manipulate that, and we're going to put it into reduced row echelon form. So an M by N matrix is in reduced row echelon form. Uh, we'll often refer to it as just RRE. Um, if the following holds, if all rows that, that are entirely zero, if there are any, are at the bottom of the matrix. If we, as we read from left to right, the first non-zero entry in a row is a one. We call that the leading entry. Has to be a one. If rows i and i plus one, so for example rows three and four, if they both have leading entries, then the leading entry of the i plus one row is to the right of the leading entry of row i. So in other words, if I have two leading entries on row 3 and row 4, the one on row 4 is going to be to the right. It's not going to be right below it or to the left of it. All of this will make sense in just a moment when we give some examples of reduced row echelon form. Now, if a column actually contains a leading entry of some row, then all of the other entries in the column are 0. Note. A matrix in reduced row echelon form may not have any rows consisting of all zeros. So reduced row echelon form doesn't mean that we have to have a row that's all zeros. It means that if it does, they need to be at the bottom of the matrix. OK, let's take a look at some examples. So we have the matrix 1, 0, 0, 4, 0, 1, 0, 5, 0, 0, 1, 2. This is in reduced row echelon form. Notice this has a leading entry. It is a 1. Everything else is a 0. This column has, or this row has a leading entry, but notice it's to the right. That's what we meant by to the right. It's to the right of that one. And every other entry in that column is 0. Here, this row also has a leading entry. It is a 1. It is to the left of these other two, and every other entry in there is a 0. And it doesn't matter what this is. 4, 5, 2, this is not a leading entry. This is the leading entry of that row. These numbers are, they're not irrelevant, but as far as the definition of reduced row echelon, they're not important. Let's take a look at another matrix. Two. 1, 2, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Same thing. We have a leading entry, zeros along the column. This one, notice this is a 2 here, and there's a 0, 0 here. This, there's the leading entry we haven't run across yet, so it's okay that this 2 is here. It has nothing to do with the definition. But now we run a quick, yes, the leading entry is a 1, 0, 0. It qualifies. It's to the right of this one. The next row, we have a 1, 0, 0, and it's to the right of these other two. So this one is in reduced row echelon form. C, we'll take 1, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. And we have a couple of rows of all zeros. So we have this nice big 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 by 5 matrix. Let's see. We have the zero entries. They're at the bottom of the matrix. That takes care of part A of the definition. 
we have a leading entry in this row. It is a 1. That's nice. All of the other entries are 0. There is nothing in this column. Irrelevant. There is a leading entry in this row, and it is to the right of that one. And all of the other entries are 0. No leading entry, no leading entry, no leading entry. Yes, it satisfies the definition for a reduced row echelon. So these three matrices are examples of matrices that are in reduced row echelon form. Now let's take a look at a prime. 1, 2, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, negative 3. This matrix, it has a leading entry, and other two entries are 0. But notice here, this row is the second row, and yet it's on top of a row that's not all zeros. So this one is not in reduced row echelon form because this 0 row needs to be at the bottom. Let's dig B prime, 1, 0, 3, 4. 0, 2, minus 2, 5, 0, 0, 1, 2. Okay. In this particular case, we take a look at the 1. It's a 0 entry. The zeros are, um, uh, the rest of the entries in the column are 0. Here, the leading entry, the first number that's non-zero, is a 2. It's not a 1. It has to be a 1 for it to be in reduced row echelon form. Uh, you can certainly take this entire row and divide it by 2 to get 1, negative 1, and 5 halves, and then you would almost be in reduced row echelon form. But as it stands, this is not reduced row echelon form. Let's take 1, 0, 3, 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 5. Let's take 0, 1, 2, 2. And let's take all zeros. OK, so we have a leading entry, which is nice. All of the other entries are zeros. Very good. Uh, we have a leading entry, which is a 1. It is to the left of, I'm sorry, to the right of this one. It's the, other, the one above it is to the left of it. Uh, so far, so good. But this other entry here in this column is a 1. It's not a 0. It needs to be a 0. So as it stands, this one is not reduced row echelon form.